So that's it, really. We're, we're recording it. We made it available. We'll some, take some questions via the via the chat at the end. We might not be able to answer all those questions, but we'll record them, go away, find answers, and collate everything. So that's it from me, really. And it's it's over to you, Peter. Okay, great, Simon. Thanks very much for that introduction, and welcome everyone. I'm glad we seem to be up and running now. Fingers crossed. So, uh, really, uh, the purpose of this presentation is really to look at uh, the employer's response. Uh, to coronavirus, COVID-19, what we need to do and specifically uh, where we can think about uh, the care sector and implications of that. Well, I've tried to adapt the presentation. Um, as you can appreciate, things are changing all the time. So it's been quite a task to keep everything uh, up to date. But as Simon said, we'll, um, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep the presentation current and uh, keep updating it. And so and it might be that we decide to, there's a couple of topics that we, we can uh, just focus on, on in the future. Um, but the first slide really, um, I attended um, uh, Personnel Today uh, forum a bit like this, but there were over a thousand people on the, on the call uh, last week, and uh, HR professionals in the UK. And at that time, just a week ago, um, everyone was asked, uh, what impact would um, COVID-19 have on, on you, on your employees? And um, so the, the first uh, slide shows um, over just over 30% said that it would have little impact on um, employees. So I'm not sure if we did that same survey again, uh, today, probably a very different picture. I would say pretty much every business in this country, um, including not for, not for profit, is com is affected by this now. And um, so um, the other options in the survey were that um, we'd have to cut pay or working hours. That was a quite a large response, forty five percent. C was that that there'd need to be some redundancies. 15, 15.68%. And um, D, we'd have to make many redundancies. Uh, and E, 5% saying we'd have to close the business. So I thought that was an interesting sort of straw poll of where we were a week ago compared to uh, where we are now, a very different place, I think. Um, so the question really, what should employees be doing in the current situation? And what we're saying, and what the C the Institute of Personnel, the CIPD, my my organisation uh, is saying, is that uh, we need to organisations need to focus on planning and prevention. Uh, consider what you can do to immediately to to protect staff and plan for future disruptions as things escalate. And um, also, your employees' health and well-being is paramount. And um, as you appreciate, I'm sure employers have a statutory duty of care for for people's health and safety at work. So that that's the sort of opening position. In terms of what we uh, need to do from an HR perspective, um, HR basics we need to follow. Um, so one basic is HR admin. Uh, make sure we've got everyone's contact numbers and emergency contact details and they're, they're up to date. Um, ensure that all employees know how to report any suspected risk to themselves from COVID-19 and that all potential incidents are reported to HR so uh, they can understand the overall risk to the workforce. Make sure all staff are aware of your response as an employee employer and what you are doing to protect people's health and reduce the risk of the in infection spreading. Continue to communicate as the situation changes. Make sure managers are clear on any relevant policies and procedures. For example, sickness reporting and sick pay. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And procedures in case someone in the workforce, in, in the workplace develops the virus. Uh, just to think a little bit more on the HR admin, you may already have a system in place, um, but uh, these um, cloud systems are very useful in terms of uh, keeping everything up to date, keeping people's details up to date and current, and, on, and also communicating messages as there are key messages you need to push out quickly uh, to people. Um, you know, if you've got one of these systems, such as the Breathe HR system, it, 
is very useful. Um, and in terms of HR policies and procedures, you know, that's something we could help with. We use a service from the CIPD called HR Inform, which is a subscription service, and they have uh, model templates and documents, so we can pull those off for you. Another question that was asked in this um, in this forum, um, how often are you communicating with your staff? Um, and the majority of people uh, were saying really daily or more often, 61% were saying daily, uh, and then a good proportion were saying every few days. I think the more we can communicate to employees at this time, the better, and especially if there's any changes. Um, people are naturally concerned, and uh, to a certain extent, you know, through communication, we can allay those uh, concerns and fears. Yeah, we need to protect our workforce, um, keep our workforce well informed, as I say, of ongoing developments and official advice from government and national health service, and promote resources that are available. You may have some internal resources. Um, that you have that could be useful. Um, advise employees to take protection precautions um, such as if they are able to work from home where possible and avoiding non-essential social contact. Advise them of the latest advice regard, with regards to self-isolation isolation for anyone or anyone who lives with someone who develops a new contagious cough or high temperature in line with the official guidelines. Um, just to say here, um, the on the gov.uk website, you can register for email updates. If you um, haven't already done that, I'd really recommend that. Uh, they're pushing out a lot of messages at the moment. It's quite hard to keep up to date with it, um, but you can sort of filter them so that you're, you're, ju you're just seeing the ones that are relevant to you. Um, so that, that's certainly worth doing. There's a, there's a lot of communication coming out from government. I, I guess about, I think today there was probably four or five messages and not just one line as they're quite detailed advice. So it's, it can be useful. Um, protect your workforce in terms of reducing the spread of the infection, infection by providing soap and hand sanitizer, gels with alcohol, especially in communal areas like kitchens and coffee areas. Provide staff with hand sanitizers. Uh, increase the frequency and intensity of office cleaning or work area cleaning. Consider a deep clean. Think about frequent wiping down of communal spaces such as kitchens, handrails on stairs, lifts, buttons, door handles, etc. And protect your workforce in terms of um, if an employee needs to self isolate on the advice of. NHS 111 or a doctor or a sent home as a, as a precaution, the UK government has announced new measures you're probably already aware of uh, that, that mean that um, everyone is entitled to statutory sick pay from day one. As, as you know, there used to be three waiting days. Um, so that is, uh, I suppose, an incentive for people to stay off. And some of these things were announced last week. So, as I say, things are changing quickly. Um, uh, that this includes individuals who may not be a carrier, but um, but um, maybe a carrier, but not having the symptoms. And we're very aware of this now. Um, just in in terms of sick pay, the box on the right. Um, as I say, uh, no need for the three waiting days. S SSP is going to be refunded. Um, for those three days um, for employers of fewer than 250 uh, for two weeks. There was a question I was asked the other day, if an, if an employee refuses to attend work because they're scared of the effects of the virus, um, we don't have any legal duty to pay them, but we should consider staff with underlying health conditions, elderly, pregnant employees, um, consider if they can work from home, and that's practically difficult in the care sector, um, but they may be ready to take paid leave or unpaid leave. Um, and also we need to consider factors like stress and anxiety, which might render employees unfit for work and any anyway be entitled to um, sick pay or SSP. 
Uh, and as we know at the moment, the self-employed are not entitled to SSP, but can claim employment support allowance or universal credit. And still on the theme of protecting our workforce, uh, employers should use discretion around the need for medical evidence for a period of absence where an employee is advised to self-isolate. Employee, employees can currently self-certify for the first seven days, uh, but announced in the budget uh, was this idea of um, uh, te a temporary alternative to the current fit note. And there's now an online facility where you can um, where you can actually uh, log on online and uh, provide self isolation uh, evidence. There is some specific guidance on residential care provision. This could probably make another webinar, I think, but I've put the, uh, the link to the guidance. It's quite detailed, it's very detailed actually. Um, so do have a look at that. And, you know, I could speak to Simon about whether it'd be worth putting, putting on a session just for that, if there's enough interest. Um, protecting your business uh, planning for short-term response, uh, key policies and processes to review and communicate. Um, employers should have uh, should develop a contingency plan if you haven't already got one uh, to prepare for a range of eventualities regarding the business impact of the virus. For example, um, you could you should appoint a pandemic coordinator to prepare plans and keep on top of the official advice. Uh, think about transferable skills. Will you have enough people to keep business critical operations running if you do face staff shortages, if, if people do fall, fall sick? And also encourage team working and external meetings through, vis, for, through video conferencing. Just some examples. Once you've taken immediate steps to protect your workforce, you can look to plan your medium term response. Um, and as I say, if, if you need any guidance around that, we're happy to provide that uh, at yet no charge. Uh, we've, we've got these model uh, templates, <clears throat> which are useful and good. Um, another point around uh, staff is the mental health and well-being. Be aware that some employees understandably may be very worried about catching the virus, while others will have concerns about family or friends, Listen to people's concerns and reassure them that any measures taken are to protect people and there's no need to panic. Communicate regularly with the workforce and ensure that line managers are regularly informed about the organisation's contingency plans so they can provide guidance to reassure people. Signpost employees to further advice and support such as an employee assistance programme or other wellbeing resources you may have available. Consider providing counselling to those employees who are particularly anxious. Keep checking on people's workloads and stress levels and offer support where possible if you can adjust targets for employees who remain working and be flexible around the deadlines. If a large number of employees are unable to work, this could lead to other employees working longer hours. In this case, you need to ensure that you still comply with the working time directive. Um, around appropriate length of daytime working, night shifts and rest breaks. Just on the point of occupational health services, again, this, that, this thousand um, HR professionals were asked, uh, to what extent are you engaging with occupational health services? Uh, far the majority uh, were saying, um, no, they weren't at all. Um, and then a further 21% were saying we don't have any OH services. So that seemed to be quite a big gap in provision. provision. Um, and uh, finally, uh, business, risk, business risk to consider. Uh, in terms of business continuity, the outbreak of the virus is very likely to affect employees in your organisation in different ways. It will disproportionately affect some people, for example, parents that need to keep children at home. Uh, some employees may need to keep working while others self-isolate or stop working. And so think about how you can prevent perceptions of unfairness creeping in and keep everyone on board in these exceptional times. 
If workers are asked to work extra hours to cover for absent staff, make sure you comply with your obligations under working time regulations, as I said. Regularly communicate much how much you value everyone's contribution. If some people are taking on additional responsibilities to bridge gaps, make sure they feel appreciated. And this is for a rel and that this is for a relatively short time. Emphasize that you can only succeed as an organization and protect your people uh, and the business if you all pull together. You know, there could be there could be pressure on remaining staff. So make sure that you're not putting unacceptable levels of demand on people and that they have the support and resources in place to fulfill their tasks, particularly any additional duties. Line managers should be trained and confident to spot any early warning signs of people experiencing stress. Make sure they have regular catch ups with people by telephone or using video conference technology if they're working from home to ensure they're coping with any extra demands or workloads. Provide clear signposting to any internal and external support for people such as counselling and an employee assistance programme. And then uh, finally, um, there is a risk of direct and indirect discrimination. Despite the unprecedented nature of this situation, employers still have to remain aware of the potential direct and, indiscrim direct and indis indirect discrimination. Uh, travel bans disproportionately affect certain groups and could be indirect race discrimination if it affects more staff of a certain ethnicity than others. You may decide that your duty to protect staff is worth taking the risk of a potential discrimination claim as employers can defend indirect discrimination claims using proportionate means of achieving legitimate aim defence. Be aware that targeting certain staff specifically and requesting them not to travel or come to work could lead to direct race discrimination claims which would not be defensible. Any request to avoid travel and not attend work should apply to all staff regardless of nationality or ethnicity and be linked to potential exposure to the virus, not racial origins. So that's uh, that's what I've got. Happy to take questions. Um, may not have all the answers, um, but as Simon has said, we'll we'll endeavour to get back to you or, and communicate uh, if we don't know uh, the exact uh, solution or the, the exact answer. Thanks for that, Peter. Um, OK, I've enabled the question mode now. So if you look on the, the bottom of the chat area, you can see um, two boxes. One has got a question mark. If you click on the question mark, then you can type a question in there. And then Peter will um, will ask that. I'll kick it off and I'll say, um, so what, at what time does somebody have to actually self-isolate, Peter? Well, what we're being told now and the Prime Minister announced last night is really uh, everyone should be self-isolating. And the only the only reasons people should be going out uh, are to uh, do essential shopping for groceries, to exercise once a day, or if there's a medical need, or to travel to and from work. Um, so really, the whole uh, self isolation thing has uh, changed uh, overnight. Really, um, and I think I think the main thing that the, the kind of key one for businesses is what the changes to SSP. Obviously, it used to be three waiting days, and you you know the employer bore the cost of SSP. Yeah. So, what are the big changes now that the government's announced regarding SSP? Well, they're saying that it will be paid from day one. Uh, I suppose the thinking behind that was that uh, you know we don't want people coming in if they've got a snivel or a cold or what could be coronavirus. Um, so uh, the, those three what were waiting days are going to be um, paid effectively by um, H HMRC. Um, and uh, the employers are going to be able to reclaim uh, those three waiting days. And how long does the does the SSP last now? How long are they? Is there a time limit on on people being off that they that they can claim back from the government? There is. I'm not sure of that offhand, to, to be honest, okay. uh, Simon. It's it's a fairly tight time frame. You're right. Okay. So uh, that hopefully that answers your question, Katie. I saw that um, you know that, that you'll be able to. Um, 
the government covers the first three days and then we'll get back to you with the answer of how long that's going to be. Uh, Suz Rogers says, if somebody self-isolates because a family member is high risk, are they getting SSP? Right. That actually came up um, yesterday with uh, one of our other clients. Um, so, um, <clears throat> no, it's not... Um, it's not... Uh, it's not uh, um, necessary for someone who with a family not family member who is high risk to also self-isolate. Um, you know, they should be coming to work and then sort of isolation should be happening, you know, in the home. Uh, but, um, but no, the employee who's um, got a sort of at-risk um, family member uh, should still be coming into work. That's what we're being told at the moment. You know, like that could change, but um, but so so for them, um, the options are we could pay them. They they may choose to take uh, leave uh, holiday. Um, that could be paid leave or it could be unpaid leave. Um, though those are really the options at the moment. Okay, thanks for that. And uh, from Amber, um, where do we stand with pregnant staff who've chosen to isolate without medical advice in regards to pay? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, they would be um, they would be eligible uh, for uh, SSP under the new rules. They would they would be eligible. Okay. Um, and then David's confirmed it is two weeks. I mean, I thought it was two weeks, and, and David Proctor's confirmed that. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, so we'll we'll put that, David. We'll put that uh, information in the in the fact sheet when we send that out. So we'll we'll confirm that. So thanks for that. Um, Emma Cooley has said that um, that she's had an instance where a family member was told to isolate too. Um, so if they've been told to isolate, would they be um, likely to get SSP? Mm. Um, so they've been told by a, a doctor, presumably. If it's a doctor, then it will be um, who? Who would be telling them that, um, Emma? Who? Who? Who would? Uh, told by one one one. There we go. The one 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 services. One one one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think in that case, it's reasonable to say that they would they would get uh, SSP. Yeah. Um, so the the op there is another option um, that the governor announced, but um, I'm not, I don't think it would be applicable to um, people in the care sector. Unfortunately, it's really, really where um, businesses are facing a quite serious downturn, and uh, they've they've come up with this uh, scheme, uh, the coronavirus job retention scheme. But that that's the eighty percent of wages, but that's not really going to be applicable to your sector, unfortunately. Um, Katie Barnes says they're telling everyone to self-isolate. Um, I mean, that's that is a general a general um, uh, uh, instruction across the whole population. But people are still expected to go to work. Um, I mean, the, the basics and certainly key workers are certainly expected to go to work. Um, so if they don't, if, if there's no reason to be self-isolating other than preventing the just the general um contact then yeah they should be they should be going to work yeah yeah i'm not, I'm not sure if that was a question but yes you're right um <clears throat> the instructions were a little bit um to me a little bit contradictory um i uh, i thought the instruction last night was that all businesses would close um but obviously you can't close um you know a care home so no. a, even if uh, even if it applied to everyone, uh, it wouldn't apply to, as you say, the key workers. And I'm sh I'm sure your this category would be considered to be key workers. Okay. If the situation continues and people wanted to reduce hours, how do they go about this? If people are not, I mean, obviously a lot of people in the care sector, certainly in dom care, are on zero hour contracts. But people who are not on zero hour, how would they go about reducing their hours, or the employer reducing their hours? Um, well, uh, probably the employer won't want to in, in reduce the hours if they're frantically busy. Um, but there could be a negotiation. Uh, I think the individual would, you know, want to come and see the line manager or the 
back um, home manager or if there's an HR person and sort of discuss it with them and um, hopefully people will be reasonably um, sympathetic. Uh, there isn't really any kind of rules or legislation around that. Uh, there would be if, if the business was sort of suffering a downturn and we could put people on short term working, but that doesn't really apply because you know the sector's busy and probably never been busier. Okay. Um, if a staff member has asthma and the gu the guidelines for them is twelve weeks, so will they qualify for SSP? Well, there's uh, there's some specific um, uh, advice around the uh, the severity because you know I'm asthmatic as well, but I, yeah, same I, 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 I don't you know I, 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 luckily it's not very severe, so I think it it depend it would depend on the severity of it as to whether they'd be considered to be an, in an at risk category. Uh, if it's severe asthma, uh, asthma then uh, you know I think uh, then you know on the advice taking the advice of one one one, we would say yeah okay self isolate uh, isolate for twelve weeks. I mean I think if that's if that's that would come across with um, you'd have to take that on a case by case basis I guess case, because, case by case yeah like you say you then look back to there and you'd be asking the um, you'd be asking the employee, did they declare it on their initial medical form? Did they declare it on the application form? What was the severity of the asthma? Have you, have you gone through a medical check, you know, when you during the recruitment period? And if they haven't, and they've suddenly come out with this, um, oh, I'm severely asthmatic, you, you'd be asking questions, um, why? What, what, you know, why has this suddenly come to a light, I would imagine? Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's where uh, you could have an option to refer to occupational health as well um you know to get a sort of second opinion on, on it um that can be quite useful we we often uh like to refer people to occupational health because they've got a m more uh balanced um, uh you know approach would wouldn't necessarily with if someone was coming to it from a gp uh perspective they they tend to be very um uh, sympathetic towards the patient but yeah. not not taking into account as you appreciate not taking into account the sort of work environment etc so that that's... yeah i mean we, we've i've done that in the past with mm -hmm. you know used occupational therapists rather than a doctor you know so the employer controls far more of the uh the process yeah yeah that, that that's useful but uh, yeah like you say why haven't they declared it before if it's come out of the blue um you know uh, we should have been aware of it anyway uh so Difficult one, but uh, hopefully that's helped a bit. So Jason's just come up, and this is a bit of a repeat of a one, but we'll just we'll just go through it again. It's um, if people are told to self isolate for twelve weeks, what are we paying them? Is it SSP, and can we claim the whole lot or just two weeks? Um, self isolating, yes, it would be SSP, um, and claiming back is um, not something I'm so familiar with but uh, my understanding is that uh, it's just the first three days that we're able to claim back for most businesses um, no, no no with the with the, the fact the government's picking up SSP it's it's definitely for two weeks so two weeks can be claimed back with it with the government the new the new announcements okay 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 um, you're probably better informed than me on that one then Simon okay um, so I've just got a couple more questions coming through. If anybody does start, I've, I've noticed some some people have started home working, um, and certainly in domiciliary care, the, um, people are beginning to shift their offices uh, into the home into the home, so they don't have to come into the office. Mm. Are there any issues related to working from home, and any issues with uh, loan working? Yes, yes, there are. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm getting a lot of echo, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of echo from you as well. Yeah, I, I don't think I can really speak under this sort of awful echo. Okay, I think we'll 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 call it a day there. Um if we've got a couple more questions being typed up, so I'll let people type up because um Again, Peter's having some some issues with the the internet just at that point. Um, most of it has. Oh, there's one more question. Um, what about uh, furlong staff? And staff have been furlonged. Uh, okay. Um, so, 
Mm. Sorry, Simon. I don't think I can really uh, getting this. No, I can't. No, we're not. Sorry, sorry. I do we're going to um, <laughs> Angela, um, Jason, Katie, and all the people that the last few people that we've not had chance to ask questions. I'll keep it open a little bit more so you can type up a, bit, a few more questions because we're going to collate all those and keep those, mm. and then we'll we'll type that up into the into the definitive answers, and then we can get that out to you. So um, thanks very much, Peter. If we yep, thank you. Um, thanks very much for that. So yeah. Um, yeah, cheers, and thank you very much. And I'll just leave that a bit, a bit more. Um, I'm just going to type your answer to that, Jason. 